and gentlemen, I present to you the National Chairman of Mission Scotland 91, Sir David McNee. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me very great pleasure to welcome you tonight to the third and final stage of Mission Scotland with Billy Graham. We have already had five great meetings at Murrayfield and Petardre with a total attendance of over 100,000. Just under 7,000 inquirers have come forward, many of them to commit their lives to Jesus Christ. We are confirmed in our belief that God is doing a mighty work in our land at this time. I would wish to thank Celtic Football Club this evening for making this stadium available to us. The directors and staff have been most helpful in all of our preparations and in giving us the use of the very excellent reception facilities. Thank you Celtic and we wish you well. It is also a great pleasure on behalf of the Scottish churches and people to welcome Billy Graham and his team to Glasgow. A big, warm Glasgow welcome. As a Glaswegian, Billy, I welcome you to paradise. Glasgow has always been a center for evangelistic mission. The city's motto is let Glasgow flourish by the preaching of the word and the praising of his name. Those who founded this famous city were wise and I believe guided of God in their choice of motto. They knew where true prosperity could be found. In the 19th century, the great American evangelist Dwight L. Moody preached here with astonishing results. And Glasgow has a special place in his heart for Billy Graham. Kelvin Hall in 1955 was the setting for the memorable All Scotland Crusade, which so many of us remember vividly. Many Scots heard God's word through Billy Graham. I well remember the preaching at Kelvin Hall. Do you? The Bible says, God says, Jesus says, God's word was preached with great authority. Billy Graham's ministry has had a profound effect on Scotland and we believe Mission Scotland will make further significant contributions to the church and nation. Those of us responsible for organizing Mission Scotland believe that the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ is needed today as much as it has ever been. The numbers of those attending church in Scotland is diminishing. There is a lack of moral responsibility in our land. Family life is under attack. Many, particularly young people, are ensnared by alcohol, drugs, and crime. Many are asking the question, does life have meaning? It is our conviction that God has brought Billy Graham and his team to lead Mission Scotland at this time. In your name, I give them all a very warm welcome, and it is our prayer that we will see God at work during these final days of mission. Ladies and gentlemen, we are privileged this evening to have on the platform with us the Right Honourable the Lord Provost of the City of Glasgow, Mrs. Susan Baird, and her husband. We also have...
We also have convener Sanderson of Strathclyde Region. The Lord Provost brings a greeting to us now. Lord Provost. Sir David, Convener Sanderson, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honour for me as Lord Provost to extend on your behalf and on behalf of the City of Glasgow a very warm and sincere welcome to the Reverend Dr Billy Graham. Billy Graham is no stranger to Glasgow or to the people of Glasgow. Despite the fact that 36 years have now passed since his last visit to the city, the memory and the message of that mission is still in the minds of many of us here this evening. Billy Graham's purpose in life is to bring us all closer to Christ, to have faith, to have compassion, to have understanding, and in doing so, to help make the world a better place for everyone. In Glasgow, as in any other major city, too many people are suffering from the effects of poverty, unemployment, ill health, loneliness, and despair. Many of these problems are faced by people across the world of our society and are not necessarily restricted by class or creed. My Council has and will continue to support the many organisations and agencies who are tackling these problems through a variety of initiatives. Scotland 1991 with Billy Graham is another major initiative to help people cope by bringing Christ closer to them and in turn them closer to Christ. No one man can achieve that alone, but if it was humanly possible, then I am certain Billy Graham would want to be that man. You are more than welcome in Glasgow. I wish your mission every success in the heartfelt hope that through your preaching you bring comfort and indeed joy to many of our citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lord Provost, and in a few moments, Mr. Graham will be responding. We're so glad you're here tonight, and we welcome along with the thousands here at Celtic Park, the many thousands who have gathered in the Live Link centers all across the United Kingdom. We have 19 different areas in the prison service as well, and on the oil rigs and derricks in the North Sea. And we hope that the service there for you will be a special blessing. Our Christian faith is a singing faith, and we're all going to sing now one of the hymns that you have on your bulletin this evening. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Let's all stand and we'll sing this hymn of praise together, please.
Thank you. You may be seated, please. To lead us in our prayer this evening as we ask God's blessing upon our service, Dr. Alistair Noble, National Coordinator of Mission Scotland, is on the platform and he comes now to lead us in this prayer as we pray together. Let us join together in prayer. O God, our Father, we lift our hearts together in prayer to praise you for Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Son, who being in very nature God, was made in human likeness and humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. We praise you because you have exalted him to the highest place and given him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We recall that long ago Jesus said to his followers, Go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. We praise you, O Lord, that over the centuries your servants have taken the gospel to every part of the world, including our own land of Scotland. We sense your great grace in permitting so many of us to be here tonight Lord Jesus Christ, once again we claim your promise to be with us always, even to the end of the age. Lord Christ, will you stand among us here tonight in Celtic Park? We thank you for your servant Billy Graham and his team, whose ministry has brought thousands into the kingdom of God. We praise you for the memory of their work in Scotland in 1955, and with joy we recognize the same dimension of blessing in the recent meetings at Murrayfield and at Pataudry. Bless, we pray, each of the meetings here at Celtic Park this week, and bless your servant and use Dr. Graham mightily. Lord God, by your Holy Spirit, help hundreds to find saving faith in Jesus Christ this night, Challenge all of us to reaffirm our faith in the risen Christ and bring the same blessings to the thousands who join us by satellite television on LiveLink across Britain and Ireland. Lord, for this week, make this home of football a sacred cathedral for the proclamation and celebration of the gospel of Jesus Christ, in whose strong name we bring these our prayers. Amen. Thank you. Our special guest tonight really needs no introduction. Wherever believers gather and others as well around the world, our guest is known and loved and his popularity and effectiveness has been increasing all these years. In fact, since 25 years ago, when we first met him, he has been with Mr. Graham on almost every mission, at least, at least one time during the visits that we've had in your beloved country. Let's welcome a man we know and love, and we're so honored to have him with us this evening, Cliff Richard. Cliff, we're delighted to have you. Thank you very much. May I say thank you on behalf of all of us. Well, just thanks for making us feel so welcome. I must admit in Scotland, I don't know why it's always amazed me, but I've never failed to be amazed by the warmth of the welcome. And it kind of puts into shade, really, doesn't it, the fact that we don't have a warm summer. I, I bet you the Dr. Graham team thought that they were coming in June because it was going to be really nice and cozy. 
But unfortunately, our weather is getting very unpredictable, and I can't believe that a couple of nights ago in the Grampian and anybody above a thousand feet would have had a blizzard hit them. I just don't know what's going on. But anyway, at this moment in time, you realize that we have the greatest lighting man doing his job, and we're lit with wonderful sunlight. Thank you for your warm welcome. I'm always, I feel grateful to have been asked so many times to stand up on platforms such as these. I became a Christian myself some 25, 26 years ago, and in fact the very first time I made a public declaration of my faith was in fact because Dr. Graham invited me, and this is how long ago it was, in 1966, he said, would I come and speak on one of his youth nights? I mean, I, I find it hard, I, I mean, I, it's really hard for me to remember those days. I, I'm so old, am I? But it's a great pleasure to be here, and as far as I'm concerned, the best move that I ever made in my life was to recognize the fact that I didn't like what I was. I didn't like what was happening to me. I didn't like what I was doing. I didn't like the world that I was living in. And remember, I'm talking about not a few days ago, but maybe 30-odd odd years ago. And the strange thing for me is that nothing ever seems to change. We still live in a world that is filled. People have always been held by drugs and crime. It doesn't seem to get any better. I mentioned my own uh, Christian faith, not just in passing, because it was an important step for me to take. But to try and uh, introduce this next song uh, sometimes is a little difficult. And so I'd like to personalize it. All I know is that what I had was insufficient. I did have my career. I'd already been singing with the shadows for almost four or five years before I became a Christian. So I had, I had people coming forward at my concerts, Billy. They didn't come forward for the same reason. And, and although the reason was satisfactory for a while, it suddenly didn't tie up. Life seemed to need more to it than the things that I was giving it or getting in return. And I bet you if you took a piece of paper and, and handed it around and asked people to write whether they were absolutely satisfied with their lives. I bet you a lot of people here tonight would want to say that they wanted to get out of what they were. To me the danger of that situation is that you rush headlong into something else that maybe is going to be even sometimes worse, out of the frying pan into the proverbial fire. And my, uh, my feelings are really simple. If you are feeling in that state, then you should think about getting out, but before you get out, make sure there is somewhere to go. Dr. Graham's whole life has been devoted to presenting a way, a very special way of moving into a lifestyle that is incomparable. I can only speak for myself. I mean, I've been a Christian for 25 plus years. I wouldn't swap it for a thousand years if the devil was to offer it to me. So, just a hint as to what this song's about. There is a way out. His name is Jesus. The only way out is the only way in is the title of this song. Spend a lot of time at the cross. 
crossroads Getting that lonely feeling inside Suddenly you made the rescue You pulled me through Now let me do something for you Let's get this thing going Let's move it along Do all the things I've been missing so long And the only way out is the only way in And it's you Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I would like to sing another one if I may. I feel sometimes that um, we live in a world that is, is very uh, cruel. There seems to be nothing that's for nothing. We're, 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 so we're taxed in so many ways, in so many directions. We're taxed financially. We're definitely taxed emotionally and I feel that it's it I mean I I know that it must be very difficult for young people uh, to to get on in life and to find a way in life but let me put it let me say this I don't believe it's just young people that find it difficult I don't think it really matters what age you are if you happen to be living now in our society the pressures around us are enormous and as I say it amazes me how how much uh, how many demands are placed upon us and so therefore I stand before you kind of stunned because there's been an offer that's been made for a couple of thousand years. You know, Jesus actually said that he came that we might have life and have it in all its fullness. How can, how can things like that come at us from the words of the Bible? How can it say things that he who has the Son of God has everlasting life? How can these offers drift past us without us being absolutely amazed and grabbing a couple of them? And so, uh, as I say, I stand stunned because it does seem very often that the world ignores the most wonderful gift that was given to us in the form of Jesus. And what's even more amazing is that we stand ignoring it in spite of the fact that it's probably the only thing that is free. And you refuse it. You won't choose it Say it's no good for you But it's free But you won't take it But you won't make it Until you do A lot of things in life look fine See them sparkle and shine Take up most of your time And time is flying They're coming at you one by one And you never leave your dreams alone Got to make them all your own You can't stop trying But this is free And you don't like it You wanna fight it And say it's no good for you And you won't take it But you won't make it Until 
And thank you, David, for playing. It's been a privilege to have them with us tonight. A couple of quick notices. First of all, we want to say a special welcome to the folks in the standing area. And we're grateful for the people here at Celtic Park and the authorities that have allowed us to use that in a certain section of the major stand, which is going to be undergoing some severe renovation. And we appreciate everyone who's made possible this wonderful attendance tonight. And so we do express our appreciation. And uh, we, we also thank you for not smoking. This has been a declared a non-smoking event, and I'm sure you appreciate that fact as well in connection with the arrangements that have been made tonight. You have other announcements in your bulletin. I know you've read them all. Let's take a, 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 an acknowledgments of them. And I'd like to add one to it, that there's a prayer lounge. The Pepino Lounge will be used for a prayer room at 6 o'clock each evening. And when you come, a steward would be happy to direct you if you'd want to spend some time there. If you have a special request for prayer, just write it out on a slip of paper and hand it to a steward and we'll see that those are shared with the folks in the prayer lounge tomorrow evening. And now our National Deputy Chairman, Mr. George Russell, a man we've come to really appreciate so much during these days, has a special word for us. George? In recent days here in Scotland, people of every age group have experienced the transforming power of the Gospel of Christ. Through Mission Scotland 91, lives have been changed, marriages restored, and families united. Who can put a value on such amazing miracles of God's power and blessing? And yet, there is a cost of making the physical arrangements of Mission Scotland. On this first night here in Glasgow, we still need to raise £258,000, a formidable sum, 
but this is required to pay the remaining bills and includes nine months of preparation and two months of follow-up. If you are here tonight and you're a guest, please do not feel obliged to give as the offering is about to be uplifted, but if you wish to, please feel free to contribute both here in Celtic Park and you who are watching by live link. Proverbs 11 and 24 reminds Christian people that it is possible to give away and become richer. It is also possible to hold on too tightly and lose everything. This is an important part of tonight's service and as the stewards now prepare to lift the offering and we bring our gifts to God and play our individual part in covering the costs of this historic mission. Your gift can be in cash or by check made out to Mission Scotland. And if you're able to make a gift aid donation of 600 pounds or more, please place your name and address in the offering box and the appropriate forms will be sent to you. Let's just stop for a moment, quiet in our hearts, and ask God to help and bless us as we bring him our offering. Let us all pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for the needs that you have met. And we pray that now as we bring these gifts for the extension of your kingdom and for the blessing of the people of Scotland and those in live link areas, we pray that your joy will fill our hearts and may we know your blessing now. For Jesus' sake, amen.
Mission Scotland Choir here in Glasgow with Ian Watson, who is the chairman of our music committee and who has directed them. Thank you, choir. Let's all stand together, shall we please? One of the newer songs that you love to sing here in the United Kingdom and in Scotland, particularly during this mission, is Shine, Jesus, Shine. And uh, as Cliff referred to it already, it has particular significance physically with us tonight. For the sun is coming in just so beautifully here, but we're singing about the Spirit of God shining throughout this land. You'll find it in your program. Let's enjoy it. If you don't know it, you'll kind of learn it on the first verse. Sing along as we share it together. Thank you. You may be seated. George Beverly Shea comes to sing for you now, and then Mr. Graham with the message of the evening. Well, <clears throat> in times like these, we need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. In times like these, we need the Bible. Times like these, oh, be not idle, be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips a solid. Rock. 
rock of ages cleft for me. Let me hide myself in I'm going to ask that we all bow in prayer, every head bowed, every head bowed in prayer. There are many of you that have come here tonight, you've never been in a meeting like this. There are others of you who have come out of curiosity. You've heard about it on the television or read about it in the press, and you decided to come and see what it was all about. You've come to, others of you have come to find real meaning in your life, and you've come very sincerely and very hopefully that perhaps tonight you're going to find an answer to something you've been searching for all your life. Well, I'm going to ask you to pray during this meeting. Pray for yourself and say, oh God, answer my prayer and meet my need. Meet the innermost longings of my heart. Our Father and our God, we pray that each one of the people that are here tonight will recognize that God loves them and God is interested in them. For we ask it in his name, amen. Now, I don't know exactly how to respond to all that has happened this evening and all that's happened since we've been in Glasgow. So many people have said, welcome back. And I didn't know that there were that many young people in those days that have now gotten silver hair. And uh, I look at a lot of them and I can't believe that 36 years has passed since we were here and what glorious days they were. But we can't look on yesterday. We can't remember what happened in 55. It's 91 that we're living in. And tonight, I'm going to ask that we pray that God will begin something tonight that'll sweep across Glasgow and that we'll see a mighty turning to God on the part of many people. I've been in Scotland long enough now to know that there is a need I went to the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland and gave a brief speech. And I heard other speeches and they all seemed to say that Scotland was in need of spiritual awakening and spiritual revival. And I hope that all of you will be in prayer and be here every night. We have only four more nights, think of it, of this mission. Tomorrow night, I want to speak to young people. Every young person under 99 years of age you be here tomorrow evening. I want to speak to you. Now I know that this is uh, Derby night, or the, tomorrow they'll run the Derby. Uh, I think that's the way it is. I hope that's it at Epsom. I, at least I thought I heard that on the radio or the television. I could be wrong. But I heard about, and I know that people are here tonight from different religious backgrounds. You may not have any religion. You may be another religion. You're absolutely welcome like everybody else. And we warmly welcome you and I want to tell you that God loves you as much as he loves anybody else. And you're certainly warmly welcome here. I heard about a man from Texas. He was a Baptist and he was not supposed to gamble. If you're a Baptist in Texas, you don't gamble. You're not supposed to anyway. But this man went to New York and they were running the horses and he raised horses down in Texas and he decided to go see the horses run and then he saw an interesting thing he saw a priest blessing a horse and that horse won and that happened four times in a row and he said this is not gambling it's a sure thing 
So he watched the priest as he blessed the next horse and for the next race. And he went over and put all the money he had in his pocket down on that horse. And the horse sure enough took off at the head of the pack, got halfway around and began to foam at the mouth and tremble and buck and died right there. And he lost all of his money. So he sought out the priest and he said, sir, he said, I saw you bless four horses and they all won their races and then you blessed the fifth horse and I put all my money down on him and I lost it. He died. What happened? The priest looked at him and said, well, you must not be a Catholic. He said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm a Baptist. He said, well, if you'd been a Catholic, you'd have known the difference between a blessing and the last rites. So we learn something from each other, and we welcome everybody, no matter who you are, here tonight. Now tonight, for the first meeting of this particular phase of Mission Scotland, I want you to turn with me to the most familiar passage in the whole Bible, John 3.16. It's a verse that my mother taught me when I was a little boy. She was giving me a bath. I was born and reared on a dairy farm in the southern part of the United States a long time ago and my mother was giving us a bath on Saturday night and she said son I want you to know, learn this passage from the Bible and she taught me these 25 words for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life someone has said that's the gospel in a nutshell this is what God wants you summed up in 25 words. God has revealed himself in those words to us. For God so loved the world. And many people are asking the question today, why is there so much suffering in the world? So much disease. Diseases that we don't know how to handle like AIDS. And poverty that the Lord Provost mentioned a moment ago. And war and rumors of war, and hate, and greed, and loneliness, and boredom, psychological problems. Then we look on our television and we see the starvation in Africa. We see Ethiopia back in the news again with starvation, and the Sudan. I have a son that, and some of his people are here tonight, are people that he works with, George Hoffman, who founded the Tear Fund. And all of those people, they work in those places, like Bangladesh. And my son is working night and day for that sort of thing. He was going to be here, but he's too busy doing some of these things. Because things are breaking out all over the world that need help. And they try to help. It's called Samaritan's Purse. And then there's the terrorism. People are talking about terrorism. And we've seen some of the attacks in not far from here and crime in America and the United Kingdom. We're not Christian countries. We used to have some Christian influences and we still have some, thank God, but we are predominantly secular countries who have a Christian heritage. Even in affluent societies, people are committing suicide, psychological problems and marriage breakups and loss of jobs and trying to make ends meet. And here we find a passage that said God loves us. And the cynical people will say, where is God? Why is there so much suffering? Why do I have so many unanswered questions in my own heart and mind if God so loves us? Does God love you? Does God love me? Does he love the people of Ethiopia? Does he love the people of the Sudan? Does he love the people of Bangladesh that have just been hit by a second cyclone? Yes, God, for God so loves us. Well, who is God? What is God? Can you prove God? No, I cannot prove the existence of God in a laboratory. But the Bible tells us about God. And we know instinctively in our hearts that there must be a God. 
Pascal, the great scientist, came to the point that he believed in God just through his scientific research and got on his knees and gave his life to Christ, the great French scientist in the 17th century. Yes, there is a God. And there are things about God I don't understand. The Bible says that he is from everlasting to everlasting. He had no beginning and he has no end. How could that be? My poor little mind can't understand that. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In Psalm 33, 6, the Bible says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. The Bible teaches that God created everything. He created you for a purpose that we'll talk about in a moment. The Bible teaches that God is a spirit. In John the fourth chapter it says, God is a spirit. God doesn't have a body like yours or mine, limited only to one place. God can be in China. God can be in Africa. God can be in America. God can be in Latin America at the same time that he's here in Glasgow. The Bible also teaches that God is unchanging. I am the Lord, I change not. In all these centuries, God has not changed one iota. He is just the same yesterday, today, and forever. In James, the first chapter, it says, In him there is no variables, neither shadow of turning. Think of it, there's not even the slightest shadow of change in God. The Bible also teaches that he's a holy God. Ye shall be holy, for I am the Lord your God, am holy. Thou art of pure eyes, and to behold evil, and canst not look on evil, the Bible, on iniquity, the Bible says. God is absolutely holy. He is the only person, the only thing in the whole universe that's absolutely holy. But if you're going to see God, if you're going to get to the kingdom of God, you have to be holy also. But you say, Billy, I can't be holy. I've tried. I've tried to be good. I can't even be good. And then the Bible teaches that God is a God of judgment. In Hebrews 9, it says, it is appointed unto men to die, but after this, the judgment. In Ecclesiastes 12, it says, God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Yes, there's a day of judgment coming. And we sometimes forget about that part of the Bible. That there's a day that you're going to stand before Almighty God, naked before God, and God has been recording everything in your life, all of your thoughts, all of your intents, everything you've ever said, everything you've ever done, all those things that you kicked under the rug and thought nobody saw. God saw it and God has a recording of it. And someday when you stand before the judgment, God will tell the angels to pull the screen down and there you will see yourself doing the things that you wish you could forget and you're going to be judged. Jesus said in Matthew 12, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Think of it, every word. The, the apostle Paul said, he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world. He's appointed a day, a day, a day has been already appointed. We had in America a short time ago, well a few years ago now, the Watergate situation. And many people are writing new books about it. And uh, it's taking on a whole different complexity than it did back in those days. But anyway, it was those tapes that made the difference. The president did not know that those tapes were running. I, I don't think he did most of the time. And people did not even recognize him. He used words and language that they, people said he never used before. We don't know, but we do know that a tape was made, that tapes were made that almost brought down the American government. If man can tape things like that, what about God? God is taping your heart as well as your mind and your actions and your body. Everything is on record and you're going to have to face that record someday. What are you going to do? when you stand at the judgment. But God also teaches, the Bible also teaches that God is a God of love. For God is love. Yea, I've loved thee with an everlasting love, the scripture says. 
In Ephesians 2 it says, God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. And if you don't get anything out of these meetings, I hope you'll remember one thing when you go home. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. And he is interested in you. He loves you so much that he gave his son to die for your sins. And that's the reason that God created man to start with. God wanted some other creatures in the universe created in his image, not robots, but people that, that could make choices, that would love him because they wanted to love him. And he created man and woman. And he placed them in a place called the Garden of Eden, which we think was in southern Iraq. We ask ourselves the question today.